Welcome to worship. Thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Lord, on this Labor Day, we thank you for the blessing of work. We ask for strength to complete each day. We ask for rest when we are weary. We ask for your guidance and hope for everyone seeking employment. We ask that you be with those whose faces we might never see, but who work tirelessly each day for the good of all of us. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 21 through 23a. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. Here ends the reading. The second reading comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, verses 1 through 12. After the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, 
The kingdom of God has come near. My dad has hard hands. He worked in railroad yards. His title was brakeman. He was a union guy. He started work young and retired at age 62. But he's never stopped working. He loves physical pursuits, fishing, hunting, gardening. Even now that he is in a wheelchair, he loves to work hard in physical therapy. Both my mom and dad did a lot of physical labor around us. But even though they worked hard physically, they also did and encouraged other kinds of work. Our family remains a family that never stops learning and trying new things, new endeavors. We understand an important truth. Work is good for people. Our bodies are built for physical labor. Our minds are geared to creativity and problem solving. Work provides human beings with meaning. Ministry is work. It doesn't always involve hard physical labor, but ministry is real work. It is the work of many, of pastors, of Sunday school superintendents and teachers, of secretaries, of bookkeepers, of sextons, of leaders at regional and national levels. But ministry is mostly the work of volunteers. Volunteers who cook and clean, who organize and teach, who plant gardens, who visit the homebound, who sing in choirs, who play the organ, who arrange flowers, who organize thrift shops and bazaars and game nights and Christmas pageants. It's Labor Day weekend, so that means we're moving toward the fall season, the harvest. After Labor Day is the time when churches in our part of the country try the hardest to gather the faithful back together after the time of summer vacations, and they try to get people back into the swing of doing the Lord's work. There are billions of people on earth and hundreds of millions of people in the United States. The population of Connecticut alone is 3.565 million people. All of these people have spiritual needs, and many of them do not regularly participate in a religious community. We are currently living in extremely stressful times. Families are stressed. People who live alone or in retirement communities are often isolated by quarantine. Not surprisingly, interpersonal conflicts seem to be increasing. In times like these, the need for spirituality is more important than ever. And though spiritual needs are great, the average size of congregations has gotten smaller. Some people blame the rise of megachurches on this. They believe that the megachurches are drawing people away from community churches. But apparently, this isn't the case. Churches have smaller congregations now mostly due to population shifts. The population in Connecticut, for example, is shrinking and getting older, and our long-lasting churches tend to reflect that fact. And yet, even in the midst of population and cultural shifts, some churches have managed to grow. But now it's time for some real talk. To some extent, our church and our church members, like most people, 
at most churches have shifted into survival mode because of the pandemic. And yet, as the pandemic drags on, more and more we are waking up to the possibilities within the limits of the pandemic. Jesus sends out 70, or apparently in some translation, 72 disciples in pairs to begin to establish the kingdom. That's less than 80 people in the whole world who start the work of spreading the good news beyond the group of Jesus and his first followers. Jesus tells them to take nothing with them beyond the clothes on their backs. They truly step out in faith. In life, perspective is everything. This is true in ministry as well as other types of work. There are a lot of things we can't do as individuals and as a congregation, but we need to shake off those attitudes the same way the disciples shook dust from their sandals and continued to move forward. We need to focus on what we can do. By switching our perspective to what we can do, Our church and many other churches have managed to do a lot of things in spite of restrictions on our activities. We all need to focus on things that matter that we are able to control and let go of all of the things that don't matter and all of the things that we cannot control. You can't calm the storm. So stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself. The storm will pass. During the time of Jesus and in our time, God has not called us to be successful. God calls us to be faithful. May we never fail to answer that call. Amen. And now let us enter into a time of silent prayer. Bless, O God, all those who labor, whether they are compensated by paycheck or pride. Let them know their true worth in your eyes. May all workers be gifted with a sense of service to the common good and graced with the satisfaction of a job well done. Thank you for those whose work provides protection, comfort, healing, and relief from suffering and stress. May all of our labors Be for your goodness and glory, O God. At this time, we lift up those who are on our prayer list, for those who we carry around in our hearts. Be with everyone in the world who needs you today, God. Help us to know who to reach out to in love and caring. God, make us always aware that the harvest is plentiful and that we are the laborers. Make us to fully appreciate the satisfaction of what it means to labor in your vineyards. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. And now with the confidence that comes from knowing that we truly are children of God, let us join together in the prayer our Savior taught. Let us say together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another that all we do affects for good or ill all other lives. So guide us in the work we do that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.